Hello, and welcome to my final recap for season 6.1 of The Walking Dead, covering those episodes that we were unable to cover the last time in written form, so I'm playing real quick catch up here and going over all of the ones that were missed from episode 2 on. And today, it's President's Day in the U.S. It is the day after thanks, uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> the day after Valentine's Day. So last night was the Walking Dead premiere of episode 9, No Way Out. But before we get to No Way Out, we get to start to finish, which was episode 8. And it's a very simple episode. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, first of which is we know the wall has come down because the clock tower crashed. We saw that at the end of the last episode. But before that starts out, uh, we see Sam in his room. And Sam is, of course, uh, listening to music, but not just any music. He's listening to Tiptoe Through the Tulips, and not just any version of Tiptoe Through the Tulips, but he's listening to the original version recorded by Nick Lucas, the crooning troubadour, which was recorded in 1929 and was uh, introduced in the movie Gold Diggers of Broadway. I'm looking it up right here online. So, you know, he's going right to the source. That's Sam, you know, geez. He is a music connoisseur. Anyone could settle for Tiny Tim? Not Sam. And Sam is having some difficulties. Uh, one of the things that Sam is doing while listening to Tiptoe Through the Tulips is he's drawing a picture of a kid tied to a tree <laughs> getting ready to be eaten by zombies. Uh, hey, good parenting, uh, Carol. You did a great job fucking this kid up. <laughs> you know, Carol holds no responsibility here, okay? Yeah, we know. Uh, but, you know, we get the slow pan through the room and we see that he's left a cookie on the floor. But before we get to the cookie on the floor, we're watching these ants. A whole stream of ants coming in down the windowsill and across the wall and onto the plate and they're swarming the cookie. The Walking Dead usually has great intros. I think they probably could have spent the time better by just playing tiptoe through the tulips in the background and putting up a placard that said symbolism <laughs> for about a minute and then you know cut to the credits uh, because we know what they're trying to get across. The the ants are zombies. They just keep coming and they keep coming and they keep coming. And the cookie is Alexandria and all the, the nice little crumbs that the ants are nibbling away at. Well, you know, we know what they are, but everybody takes off. Everybody's running their asses off. Uh, Maggie runs up in a tower. Uh, Eugene, he was the one who was on the walkie-talkie and saying, help us, help us. Uh, he ends up with Rosita and Tara in a uh, garage. Uh, Carol ends up with Morgan. Hmm. That can't go well. Uh, they've also got Denise with them down in the basement talking to uh, the wolf, or as Greg Nicotero kept calling him last night on The Talking Dead, the W guy. Um, and Rick ends up in the house of Jesse uh, he's got Father Gabriel, Deanna, and Michonne with him. One of the strangest things that happens when they get to Jesse's house, uh, other than the fact that uh, Ron is starting to get crazy eyes, and um, they're worried about Deanna, and they later find out that Deanna's been bit, which doesn't bode well for her, is the fact that Tiptoe to the Tulips keeps playing throughout most of this period when Rick is, you know, at his not quite nuttiest, but you can tell he's ready to snap at some point. And at no time, you know, they even tell Sam, turn the records off, turn the music off, you know, we got to be quiet. And he just keeps playing it. And nobody says a damn thing to this kid. You know, you're half expecting Rick to walk in and just go, bam, there goes the record player, or bam, there goes Sam. But again, we know he can't do that because, uh, well, the, the god of The Walking Dead, Robert Kirkman, would smite uh, Rick with a, a thunderbolt or something like that. Um, you know, you just can't do it. 
And that became obvious why, <laughs> if you watched last night's episode, it became obviously why nobody does anything to Sam. They just let him, you know, uh, PTSD out the whole time. But anyway, there's all sorts of drama going on inside the houses without a, not a lot happening. I mean, nobody's in a position to do anything. Carol apparently is recovering from a concussion. Uh, Father Gabriel, you know, he's scared out of his mind, but he's telling Rick, you know, I'm with you, don't worry, I'm going to help you out. <sighs> Tara, Rosita, and Eugene are just kind of stuck. They don't know what they do. Until later in the show when you discover that Eugene knows how to pick locks. So they've been sitting in a goddamn garage for like, who knows how long, doing nothing and Eugene's like well I know how to pick a lock we can get inside the house well, th thanks a lot genius uh, you know some real idiot balling there Ron he's not dealing well he's definitely his father's son he has become Porch Dick Jr. And, of course, he goes into the garage. Carl goes into the garage after him. Carl is still not getting this vibe that Ron is totally pissed off at him. And they go into the garage, and they have one of the stupidest fights because Ron's, Ron's threatening to blow Carl away. So uh, he locks them into the garage. Of course, they can't get out. And he's doing everything he can to hit Carl without hitting Carl and they just it's one of the most ridiculous fights in the world especially when you know that Carl has put down people for less you know Carl has put people down for just looking at him weird and he's just letting Ron do all this bullshit well we again if you watched last night's episode you know why um, but the gist of the story is, Ron's got the keys in his pocket. They're locked in the garage. So Rick has to break the locks off the door to get the kids out of the garage, which is now being filled up with zombies because, well, they not only made a shitload of noise, but they also broke the window out of one of the doors so the zombies could come into the garage. And now that the door doesn't lock, well, they're going to come into the house. So they managed to block off the access to the upstairs with a, a sofa. And they're going to do the old, we're going to cover ourselves in, in zombie entra entrails and get out of the house trick. Uh, Michonne is having a lot of heart to heart with uh, Deanna, who is dying. And she knows she's dying. She knows she's going out. And she's trying to impart that feeling to Michonne of what do you want out of life? You know, what do you want to do? She's really kind of seeing Michonne as the most human of them. She knows Rick's a leader, but you can sense that she feels that there's more to Michonne than just wielding a katana and, you know, killing people left and right. So she's trying to impart this idea to her that, you know, you have to decide what you want. You have to decide what you're going to get out of this this whole project, if you're going to live, you know, if you're going to make something of Alexandria, what are you getting out of it? it it's really kind of the, the best moments there in the show because the rest of it is just sort of like nothing's going anywhere. I mean, there's a lot of crazy crap going on outside, but nothing's going on inside. And we do realize that, well, Glennon. Enid, they do manage to get back inside because they go to the far end of Alexandria and they come over the wall, but we never really see anything more after that. And there's a big fight between Carol and Morgan, surprise, where, you know, Carol's like, I'm going to kill this wolf, and Morgan's like, no, you're not. And Morgan, of course, has his back to the wolf. Uh, a more idiot bowling going on here is that these two are fighting over whether or not this guy should live or die. Denise, the doctor, is sitting in a corner not saying a word until it's too late. Uh, Morgan knocks out 
Carol. Like, you know, nobody's business. And then Morgan gets knocked out by the wolf dude. And he manages to get a knife to uh, Denise's throat before Eugene, Tara, and Rosita show up. So, of course, they got to lay down their weapons. And he takes off outside. You know, I've, I'm going to make a break for it. Don't worry. So you don't see them anymore. Um, Rick, Carl, Jesse, Ron, Sam, uh, Father Gabriel, and Michonne, and, of course, Judith are all covered in bed sheets, covered with zombie entrails, and they're gonna walk out, make their way to the armory. And that's basically it. Uh, it the episode ends with them linking hand in hand and walking into the zombie herd. And of course, Sam's like, Mom, Mom, and you're just waiting for something bad to happen, and it's a fade to black. In terms of season enders, or even mid-season enders, this had to be absolutely the weakest one that The Walking Dead has ever done. And when you watched, or if you watched, the uh, season 6.2 opener last night, you kind of understand why they did it that way. On the other hand, <laughs> it's stupid me, um, they could have added a half hour to the ending episode of start to finish. They could have taken like the first half hour of last night's episode and tacked it on to the end of, you know, start to finish. And that could have ended everything on a fantastic um you know, it could have ended it on a fantastic cliffhanger, but they didn't do that. I, I, I didn't get that. I, I really didn't understand that, but then again, I don't work at AMC. I'm not one of the producers on The Walking Dead. I'm just someone who has read the comics and who watches the show and makes observations about the show for good or bad. But compared to some of the the season ending and mid-season ending episodes that they've had in the past, this was really by far one of the weakest ever. And it really kind of left people going, ugh, what's going to happen now? Now, last night, of course, there was a good payoff, and Rachel's going to review that in her recap, which she, if I, if I read things correctly, because we were just speaking on Facebook, uh, maybe... 25 minutes ago. Uh, she's working on that right now. She'll probably have it done about the time I get this video posted. So when you're seeing this, her recap will be up. So um, I'm not going to step too much into that other than to say I was greatly entertained and they did something which stayed true to the plot line, one of the major plot lines in the comic book. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go from that point. Um, straight into hell is probably the best answer uh, because it is The Walking Dead and they, uh, there's not a whole lot of happiness here. So That's a catch up of everything that has happened prior to last night's episode. It was all of the stuff that was missed uh, during recap season last year and recap season is starting again. Uh, Rachel should have hers out. And I'm looking forward to reading what she has to say because I want to throw my two cents in there as well. Um, a couple of things I'd like to say before I go because I, I, I'm a wordy, wordy person like that. Uh, I've had a lot of fun doing these video recaps and I hope to be able to do maybe a couple of more uh, in the future. Maybe, um, you know, here and there uh, I could throw one in sometimes like if I'm under pressure I can do my best to uh, throw a recap out there for you know maybe Fear the Walking Dead or Orphan Black or something like that and one of the things I'd love to do and I'm throwing this out as a challenge Rachel I'm throwing this out as a challenge is that one of the things I'd like to do is uh, the last couple of times we've been doing predictions for the upcoming seasons and stuff like that I would love for one of the shows that we both know and enjoy, uh, we could do a Skype 
together. Uh, I'm more than willing to get up early in the morning and do it while you're doing it late at night because in case you hadn't realized it, I'm on the east coast of the United States and she's in Australia. So, you know, there's about a, a 14 hour time difference between us, but we, we converse every once in a while because I'm a notorious early riser. Even like today I was up at 5 a.m., which I didn't need to be. So one of the things I would love to do is do a split screen Skype and have us talk about predictions of what's going to happen or maybe even talk about one of the episodes instead of writing it out. We could actually just do one uh, face face to face and record it and put it on uh, the Snarking Dead blog and just have people hear us laughing back and forth and making bad jokes and and probably saying fuck a lot <laughs> which I think that would tend to happen with the two of us talking <laughs> did you see that shit yeah fuck him. yeah well that probably would happen We'll see. That's that's one of my uh, that's one of the things I'd like to put on my wish list. So, I've enjoyed doing these videos. I hope you've enjoyed watching these videos. Um, I hope to do a few more in the future. I hope you'll enjoy the upcoming Walking Dead recaps that Rachel will be doing. And when she's done with the Walking Dead, I'll be picking up Fear the Walking Dead come April the tenth. And right around the same time, I'm going to be doing Orphan Black as well. So I am going to be a busy girl. Uh, maybe one of those I'll write, and the other one I'll do a video of. That might be the thing that will drive me the least crazy. So uh, we'll see. I've, I've got a month and a half, two months before that happens. So i got time to prepare. So until then, this is Cassidy Frazy signing off and wishing you all well. And I hope you enjoy... The Snarking Dead, two crazy girls from opposite ends of the world, uh, just ripping off the zombie apocalypse. Bye. <laughs>